Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. My name is Farahanim binti Muhammad Isa, a postgraduate student from Department of Arabic Language and Literature, International Islamic University, Malaysia. Today, I will present on the role of Arabic short stories podcast in enhancing Arabic language among non-native students. For today's presentation, I will be going through six main points. First, problem statement. Second, basic language skills. Third, importance of listening skill. Fourth, choice of podcast for students who specialize in Arabic language. Fifth, methods of developing students' listening skill. Six, or the last one, examples of Arabic short stories podcasts. Let's see the first one, problem statement. Why do I choose to present about this issue? Based on my experience and observation, Arabic majoring students in IIUM are mostly evaluated by quizzes, midterms, finals, written assignments, or articles. These types of evaluations lead to the lack of listening and speaking skill activities, either inside of the class or outside of the class. So that's why non-native Arabic students are having difficulty to fathom native speakers' words. Sometimes they are having difficulty to even understand lecturers' words in class. Thus, they are unable to converse well in Arabic fusha. There are Arabic majoring students, but they couldn't converse in Arabic. That's the biggest challenge, the biggest issue that non-native Arabic students are facing nowadays. So we need to look back. What are the basic skills in learning Arabic language or any other new languages? There are four basic skills. When we first learn a new language, we first hear it spoken, isn't it right? So we, there you are, listening skill is needed. And then we try to repeat what we hear. We hear, for example, kifahalik, kifahalik. We try to imitate kifahalik. And then speaking skill is needed on the second step. And then we try to read. We try to learn to read. We try to learn to read these Arabic symbols. Until we can read a whole Arabic text. And then the last one, we try to reproduce these symbols in paper. We write in our own writing styles. If we observe, if we see here, listening skill is the first step in learning Arabic language. If our listening skill is poor, how can we ensure our three other skills are good? Now I want to talk about the importance of listening skill. Malaysia has exam-oriented education system. Students study hard, memorize the knowledge, understand so that they can excel in exam, so that they can achieve flying marks, so that they can get high CGPA. Why? Because this high CGPA can determine how easy or how difficult they could learn a job after they finish their study, could determine their future career. So that's why, because of the focus on examinations, listening and speaking skills development often neglected. This results to Students are very good in examinations, but are poor in speaking in Arabic. Listening skill is very much connected, is very much related to speaking skill. If students want to develop, want to improve their speaking skill, first and foremost, they have to improve their listening skill. They have to develop their listening skill. Thus, for today's presentation, I want to focus on implementing listening activities so students can improve their listening skill. Studying Arabic language in Malaysia, of course, has many challenges. Above all is the lack 
of Arabic speaking environment. It's rare, it's difficult for non-native Arabic students to find a listening activity outside of the class. So that's why, first of all, we need to implement listening activity formally. Before I talk about the choice of podcast, what is the better or the best choice of podcast for Arabic measuring students? What is podcast? What is it? Podcast is digital audio file made available on the internet. We could listen to it. Some podcasters even upload, even put the text so we can read along while listening to the podcast. So, listening to Arabic children and young adults short stories podcast for Arabic measuring students could be a better alternative, could be the best alternative also. Why? There are many benefits to it. First, it can provide students with broad and excellent vocabularies. Short stories offer wide area, wide range of vocabularies based on different kinds of genres. The second one, students could experience the joy of listening to podcasts. Listening to podcasts could be boring, isn't it? We could sleep in the middle of listening to grammar teaching podcasts or motivational talk podcasts, for example. Could we sit down? Could we stand? Could we handle listening to motivational talk podcast for 10 minutes? It's hard. It's impossible, especially for students. So that's why uh, listening to short stories podcast, uh, which uh, podcasters use storytelling skills, could bring joy, could bring pleasure to them so they could feel Oh, this is interesting. I don't feel boring at all listening to podcasts. Why? Because they use, the podcasters use intonation, singing, and sound effects. It can broaden their imagination and learn uh, about other cultures and people. Uh, when listening to short stories podcasts, while listening to it, students can imagine in their head oh, about the scenes, about the situations, that are happening in the stories. This, uh, in the same time, can improve their creative thinking uh, while also they can learn about other cultures and people of uh, inside the short stories. And then it can make them invested with the podcast. Most podcasters, or we can call uh, short uh, podcasters who uploaded short stories podcast as storytellers, they often uh, upload uh, these podcasts in series. They are episodes, they are plots, um, so they are episodes. So uh, students get uh, could get hooked on to the shows. We could we could call we could call show. We could call this podcast show. Students could get hooked on. Oh, yesterday I listened to episode one of uh, a story with story with Pita, for example. Um, uh, for today, I want to know. The podcaster might have uploaded a new episode, the second episode. I want to know what happened in the second episode. So, it students, uh, it makes them engaged. It makes them uh, engaged with the uh, podcasters uh, daily, in their daily life. And then, students could understand the context of the podcast better and easier. Why? Uh, because uh, Arabic short stories podcast, uh, which uh, includes storytelling skills such as intonation, from low to high, to singing, la 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 la, to sound effects. Uh, uh, for example, crying, talk, 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 talk. Yes, the podcasters use sound effects in their podcast. So they could understand, oh, uh, when the podcaster is crying, so the uh, the students students could understand. Oh, the character is sad right now, so they they don't have to check every meaning of the words. And then, most Arabic short stories podcasts display the text. They display the text, uh, uh, so students can read alongside. Uh, can read along while listening to the storytellers. 
so it's easier also for them to understand what is going on in the story so they couldn't uh, they won't be lost uh, they if they in a nick of time they lost focus they could get back on track and then uh, it could build students confidence in conversing with arab most arabic short stories podcast are arab people so if we listen to them if we listen to them speaking in uh, uh, every day in our daily lives we could adapt we could learn how they are speaking style how arab speaking styles or dialects so we could we wouldn't be afraid anymore to speak to converse to be friends with arabs oh i have listened to them every day i have known about their speaking styles and dialects i could get what they say so it, it it boosts our confidence and then methods of developing students listening skill first incorporating podcast time in teaching method podcast time i could say there are two podcast times in class which is uh, not not private or public and then the second one private podcast time so in class lecturers can either spend 5 to 8 minutes for podcast time and do some in class homework how uh, lecturers can help students uh, to listen to podcast more efficient lecturers can put subtitles uh, alongside the audio uh, and also lecturers can give the text beforehand either soft copy or hard copy so there there are two activities pro listening activities and post listening activities uh, pro listening activities uh, student uh, the le lecturers can introduce new vocabularies uh, can introduce okay uh, students today these are the new vocabularies you will find in this podcast and then after that uh can expose students to the listening task to the to, to listening to the podcast why we need these pro listening activities so that uh, students could expect what they would hear in the podcast so that they would know oh all right oh, this is a uh, today's topic this is today's theme so that they couldn't be scared or they couldn't be oh what is this so they could prepare mentally before listening to the podcast and then post listening activities students could share because everyone infer meanings differently someone dif infer meanings from you know, intonation someone infer meaning from uh, uh from the words before the word so we sh we could share students could share how each person uh, infers meaning of certain words and students also could share uh the topic or story by summarizing them and then the second one which i talked about private private podcast but this being done formally so lecturers could give podcast time as homework uh to students so that they can have self learning why we also need this self learning podcast time because listening to podcast alone sitting down in our own room with headphones on could improve students attention and focus rather than listening to podcast in class with many other students with our friends beside us disturbing us so if we listen to podcast alone we put our own time to listening to podcast then we students could comprehend uh, the podcast the stories better and then examples of arabic short stories podcast First, storytimewithtita.com. You can find this on Google. Storytimewithtita.com is founded by Amal Al Sadek. It's very interesting. There are many episodes and series. And then, arabcast.org. Arabcast.org is actually uh, audio an audio library for many books. Uh, but here we can uh, try for example you can type uh, any author you like uh, for example i type here taghrid and najjar she's she writes many arabic short stories uh, either for children or young adults it she's she writes many interesting books many interesting stories you can uh, you can find 
her audio books here in arabcast.org. And also listen not www.listennotes.com. It's a search engine. It's a big search engine. You can you have to know first who is the podcaster you want to find. For example, here I type Shala Biat. She's interesting too. You can type Shala Biat here, and then there you go. You can find her page here. You can find many of her stories or podcast being uploaded here. And then also you can find many Arabic short stories podcast in YouTube. I hope my presentation today could bring many benefits and good challenges, especially in Arabic field. Thank you so much. Jazakumullahu khairal jaza. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.